everybody. I hope everyone is doing well today. So first, I would like to go over our schedule a little bit. So what we're working on today is continuing drafting the annotated bibliography. And I have a part four lesson helping with annotations. And I also have the link to the MLA style handout from last class as well. Um, now, please do keep in mind that the rough draft is due by Tuesday, March 16th by midnight. So that is actually by Tuesday night by midnight. Even if you don't have a complete draft, that's okay. Um, but please keep in mind that the final draft will actually be due on Thursday by midnight. Now, we won't be doing peer review on Thursday. We don't do peer review really for the annotated bibliography. Normally, what we end up doing is having a sort of review checklist that you can go through your rough draft and make sure that you have everything for your annotated bib. So that's what we'll be doing on Thursday. And hopefully, if everything pans out, um, fingers crossed that we will hopefully have our library digital workshop. I am still working with one of the librarians. So hopefully we will also have like a bit of a digital review workshop for the library, hopefully on Thursday. Um, but if that doesn't work out, I can always include that within one of our later lessons as well. So that's pretty much what we're doing this week. So here's the lesson that I'm going to be working on today is the annotated bibliography and this is part four for annotation. So I would like to go ahead and just kind of get right into that. Okay, so an annotated bibliography is a list of citations to books, articles, and documents and sources. So keep in mind that you should have seven to 10 sources and your length might vary, that's okay. Uh, your annotated bib might vary depending on how many sources you have and that's okay. So each citation is followed by a brief, descriptive, and evaluative paragraph. And these paragraphs are called annotations. Their purpose is to inform the reader of the relevance, accuracy, and quality of the, of the sources cited. So each citation is always considering the relevance, accuracy, and currency. And that stands for that uh, crap test. So for your annotated bib in this class, you will be providing citation followed by two short paragraphs with specific content that provides information about the source. Now we have already talked about the crap, the crap test at uh, great length. And you can also find the link to the guidelines here. Now, if you're struggling, I definitely recommend taking a look at the links that I have provided within this handout. It talks quite a bit, especially with the helpful links and handouts. You can always chat with a librarian. You can take a look at the MLA formatting and citation guide. You can take a look at Purdue OWL and I have the link to the handout about MLA citation and formatting. And of course, further information about the CRAAP test. And I also do have the sample paper of the sample bibliography right down here as well. So anyway, that's just a quick review of that. But again, many, many, um, many times we have talked about the CRAAP test, which stands for currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose, and point of view. So just to go into a little bit more detail, and this will help with annotations as well. So one thing that you might want to consider when looking at your source is currency. How recently was this information published or posted? Now keep in mind that you should probably keep your sources within the last five or six years for the most recent information. So can you find a publication date if the source is not recent 
Will the date affect the information? So relevancy. Does the information answer your research questions? Who is the intended audience and how do you know this? And of course, another thing, another major thing that you want to think about is authority. And that establishes the ethos of your source. So you want to think about who wrote the information. Is the author knowledgeable on the topic? How do you know that they are knowledgeable? Are they a professional in their field? And of course, you want to think about accuracy as well as the information supported by evidence. Does the author quote others? Now, this might include other in-text citations from other sources, and that's okay, uh, because that does help establish some accuracy depending on who they are quoting from and where they are quoting from. So can it be confirmed by other sources? What evidence do you see? Many times you might even find other sources while looking at a particular article and your author might quote another professional in their field. And that's actually a great way to locate further sources. Now, most importantly, you want to think about purpose. We have been talking about purpose, audience, the whole semester. And you have talked, we have uh, learned quite a bit about it within 1510 as well. So why was it written? Was it to sell something, to sway opinion, to inform? Is it toward a particular point of view? Is there bias present within your source? What major player does the source represent? Now, in terms of this, this could include a sort of, maybe a particular discourse community on your topic. So here's a sample here of the crap test and the annotations. Now, keep in mind that when creating your citations, the first line is usually formatted like this, and then the first line and afterwards is when you have to indent the other lines. Now, I will show you all how to do this within Google Documents. There have been a couple questions about that, so I will show you all how to do that. But first, I really want to concentrate on this annotation. So the first thing they talk about is when this particular article was published, and then the background of the author, who was president of Columbia University, in addition, he was the president of the University of Michigan during two U.S. Supreme Court affirmative action cases. Now, this is establishing ethos of your author. So this article helps to argue why racial and economic diversities are affecting education in the nation. The attended audience is anyone who is interested or wants to know more on affirmative action or diversity and how it affects those in colleges. Uh, Bollinger cites many studies and books, some used to help defend the Supreme Court cases listed. So, for example, he cites a study done by UCLA that found schooling for minorities now is more divided than it was in the 1960s. This article was written to inform the audience of the benefits college campuses get when there is a diverse population of students. It was also written to sway readers' opinions on the continuation of affirmative action in favor of keeping it. So in paragraph two, you definitely want to make sure that you summarize the course, or summarize the source. Goodness, sorry. Um, so in your second paragraph, you'll need to summarize the piece, identify its purpose, and anticipate how you will use the source. So you should summarize the content of the piece in a way that demonstrates that you have read the source and at least have understood its main ideas. Um, secondly, all sources present a main idea or claim, even if it appears to be purely informational because all works have authors with agendas. So you want to be able to identify the thesis, the claim, or the main idea. Then let us know why this source is here, why did you put it within your annotated bib, and how you plan to use it within future assignments as a representative of a major player for background information, or maybe for even statistics. 
So for paragraph two, in terms of summarizing the, the source, you want to think about what is the main idea of the source? What are some claims that the author is making? And to give a brief summary so that outsiders may be able to understand the content of that particular source. So how might you use the source and why are you including it within your bibliography? Anyway, that is the lesson for today, but one thing I would like to show you all is how to format a citation. So one thing that you do want to, um, especially, I believe most of us are using Google Docs. So one thing that you want to make sure of is that it, it is in Times New Roman and that it's in 12 point font, which I already have this particular citation in. This is just a sample citation that I picked out from an online journal from one of our databases. And I copy and pasted the citation right actually from the database. So let's say it looks like this. What you have to do in order to get the spacing is make sure that first line is on left align and then the second, third, and fourth lines they're on, those have to be indented, indented. So in order to do that, you have to go into format, line spacing, oh I'm sorry, actually you have to go into un align and indent and then go into indentation options. And then from there under the special indentation box, you have to make sure that it is on hanging indent and it will automatically set it to 0 0.5. And then from there, you can just hit apply. So that's all you have to do in terms of the, spa for, in terms of the spacing of your citations. So I at least did want to make sure that I showed you all how to make a hanging indent for your citations within Google Documents. If you have any questions about that, feel free to email me. I can always send you a screenshot of this, uh, maybe another short video clip of this, if it's still a little confusing and you're just not sure. But that is the easiest way to go about it. Now, the second thing that I do at least want to remind you all um, now, I have looked at the rough drafts, and the rough drafts actually are looking pretty great for the annotated bibs. The only note that I think I have is making sure that your entries and that your annotated bibliography is arranged alphabetically by the author's last names. So once you are done with your annotated bib, just make sure to go through and make sure to reformat your bib to make sure that your entries are sorted by alphabetical order by the author's last name, which probably only takes about five minutes within Google Docs. So anyway, I think those are really the only notes I have for the time being. But if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. And again, I do have the link to the handout on MLA citations. So if you need to look at that, feel free. But um, anyway, that is it for today's lesson. I hope you all have a great day. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and email me. I also have office hours on Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, anyway, that is it for today. Thank you all and have a great day. Bye, everybody.